Hi, Mike German, Visual Animation. Welcome to day four of Fun in Four. I hope you're enjoying it so far. I hope you've built the last three from day one, two, and three. Um, we're on day four and we've got another pretty exciting one to show you. So let me just, again, let me just show you this video first. So, <laughs> so my little mate's back from day one. But we're not going to be building him today. We're going to be doing this, this wrecking ball on this chain. Okay, so I'll just show you that and see if we can get this done in four minutes. Okay. So here we are, blank screen again. Let's see if actually this. Let's see if we can build this. Now, what do we need? We need the ball itself. So we'll, we'll keep it at 100. Let's just change the, the style. I couldn't say this word last time and I haven't practiced and I might not be able to say it again. Is it an Okoshahedron? I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll get a pronunciation next time and I'll know what I'm saying. Anyway, one of them, um, 30 segments. And now let's make the chain. So that'll be the, that'll be the ball. And the chain we are going to make from a rectangle that we are going to shrink down quite a bit. So let's go 50 by 20 and let's round it as well. So oh, let's go. The, let's go the other way. Let's go 20 by 50. There we go. What does that look like? It's a bit chain, bit link, bit chain link like. Um, okay. So now we need a. What do we need? I've forgotten. No, we need a circle. And then we're going to put that in at two. And we also need the sweet nerve. So let's just pop those into the sweet nerve to give us one of the links of the chain. Now we need to drop all of that into a cloner. And then the cloner we're going to set to linear and we're going to have say let's have 10 and we need to just drop this down to say yeah i think that'll be okay about 43 what's 45 give us probably a bit yeah 45 might be fine um and then we need to spin i'm not sure i'm never quite sure no i'm never quite sure which one it is but yeah that's right we need to spin the top one the horizontal i think it is it? Oh, no <laughs> the top one um to 90 degrees okay and what that'll do is give you give you chain links like that we also need a another chain so let's take out sorry just one link of the chain let's take out the sweetener there and let's drop that to here and let's just spin that. Um, hang on a second. We want to spin that on top one at 490 again. Oh, blimey. I put the wrong number in there, didn't I? Uh, I'm doing the wrong one, that's why. Oh, dear, what am I like? I think it used to be over there. <laughs> Bear with me. <laughs> it is Friday. Um, right so what have we got we've got the link there now what we're going to do with that one and the ball is we're going to combine these two together so we click them all and then we go here and go to connect objects and delete okay and what that will do is just create this object on its own there that's all flattened in the geometry so if you go to here you'll see you know it's just one it's just one piece right we've got that um let's just get a let's just get a torus spin it over and make it a little bit smaller let's make the whole thing smaller actually so it, so it's something for the, the chain to hold on to at the top there right so what we need to make sure before we do this and so none, none of these pieces are actually intersecting or touching intersecting whatever you want to call it at any at any point okay they're all free of each other what we can do then is we can put a collider body on the torus at the top the ring that holds it and then we want to put 
put rigid bodies on this, call that chain, just so we know that it is the chain. Uh, and then the ball, again, we want a, a rigid body on there. Okay, so we now have the wrecking ball. All right, let's spin it around like that. Okay, what we need to do now is just, let's just group them all, just select them all, not group them, just select them. And then we will just rotate it something like that, just so it gives it some swing. Okay, so what we need to do before we let this go, well, I'll show you what happens if we just let it go. All the links break. <laughs> so what we need to do, we go on to the um, rigid body on the chain and we go to, I think it's mass, that's right. And then we change this custom center. We just tick, check that. Um, and then we go to collision and say move in mesh. And we want to do the same really for the ball. Let's just have moving mesh on there. And let's just see what that does. It may still do it. And if it does, I've got a workaround for it. It's going to be a bit slower now because the moving mesh has got a lot more calculations it works out. But it's more accurate. It will simulate it more accurately. It looks like it's still breaking. It's still breaking. So what we do is go uh, hit control and D it brings up our project settings we'll go to dynamics go to expert tab and we'll up the steps per frame here to 30 and the maximum solver iterations per step to 30 as well and that should give more calculations now for it to work this out and not not actually break the chain so yeah there's a few things you can do there straight out of the box it's it doesn't work it's it won't hold weight but if you if you put more steps more steps per frame more iterations in and you change it to move in mesh um and what is the other thing we change i'll just let this run through i was going to just have a look at that last thing just to make sure um, it, it was the custom center as well make sure that's ticked and then and then if you add those three things onto it, it will actually hold the ball. Okay, so what we need to do really, and I'm going to speed this part of the video up because it's not fair for this to, to slow things down. We need to cache the chain and all the dynamics at this point. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll bake all these objects and then um, I'll see you in a second. caught me drinking there we are finished we are finished so let's have a look at what that's doing now okay so now you can see it's nicely just swinging we've only got 90 frames which oh, I'm a bit annoyed there that might not be enough for this but that is that is it essentially um, but if you've got a few more minutes I know this is a four minute thing well, I've banged on about it being four minutes but if you have got another extra minute or so I just want to show you how we can use this wrecking ball to actually wreck something. What's the point of having one if it just swings around? Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna put a sheet of glass just here. Okay, let's make that a nice thin piece of glass. Now, how do we, how do we get a piece of glass? What do we do? Right. So we make sure that the ball will hit it it will swing this way and it will hit it now we, what we need to do with this is we need to put a, a Volanoi fracture so if you go to Volanoi fracture and press alt it will make it a, a child of it uh, so then we get the piece of the glass but we want this to break where it hits it and not just randomly all over the glass so what we do is we go to sources where the point distribution generator is and we can try just changing the settings on here just to give us let's just see what we get if we mess right so that might not be too bad so what we do now is we can move that around on the screen by using this transformation section at the bottom so if we go along with the not the x <laughs> the other tube not the x we can move this um like this look okay so we can say 
we want the ball um, to be hitting somewhere in the center here. Um, well, let's move the glass over. Let's move the whole thing over to here. So we're roughly going to be hitting the center of this. Um, so, and then let's have less, let's have less breakages at this point. Okay. So we just got, we've got some bigger sections that break that we can put in here. So say eight of those will break. And what we do now is we, where the ball is going to hit, let's just see where it's going to hit. It's going to hit there, you see? What we can do now is we can add, add another distribution source. And with this one, we can have, say the 20. But what we want to do is go back to the setting we had, which is roughly this one. Um, and then what we want to do is we want to bring the scale down. So we want to put like a 0 0.2, a 0 0.2, 0 0.2 in the scale. That brings the scale right down to the middle, you see that. And we can have, we can have 40 points. Let's have some more in there. Okay, and now what you can see, if I move, I don't know if it'll allow me to move. No, we need to do it on here. So. If I move this around, but you will see that there is a much more concentrated area of breakage where the ball is going to hit. Yeah, which makes more sense, doesn't it, for it to be for there to be more there. So let's see if we can go. Let's just put all the yeah. Let's just let's really kind of crank that up now. Oh, wrong one again, sorry, I've hit the wrong one. Right, so we're just moving that roughly to the middle. Um, and what I would say here is I think we can make this make this shape more of a square, I think. If let's try putting in, I think that one was okay. I think we just need to move one of these down. Ah, wrong way around. So if we go 0 0.2, then this one we say 0 0.05. Okay. And then we just get a, we get like a smaller centerpiece there. Though. So if we come back, you'll see, if we bring the ball back out, you'll see in here that, that we've got a concentrated area of glass that will, that will be hit by this ball and it will look more real because it will hit and smash smaller pieces and then the bigger pieces will then break afterwards, you know, and crack out at the end. Now to make those break, we just need to put a, rigid body on there and we need to put some a, a glass texture on there so let's just choose um, transparency it's already on glass um, that should be fine as is let's just pop that on the volanoid fracture we now we need to go on to this and turn off if we go to object the colorized fragments okay so you just see the glass now I'll just do a quick render because there is an issue when you leave this on, which is you probably can't see because we need to put, um, let's just put a physical sky in. I just want to show you, you see it's pre-cracked, which is not good because the ball's not hit it yet, right? So what we need to do is we need to turn off the Volanoi fracture where it says enabled, okay? Then we will turn it off and keyframe that. And then when the ball hits it so we need to keyframe this forward um hang on a second we are we are losing <laughs> we are losing the the object here under gravity i wonder if what can we do with that let's do the same with enabling the the dynamics as well okay so we'll we'll turn the dynamics off so it doesn't drop and then when we get to a point where let's just go back a few here just where the ball's breaking through it let's just turn off the um uh what am i doing the, the work frame there we go so that the ball's just poking through i don't know if you can see that at this point so that is the time when we need to turn these back on so we need to keyframe the uh the enabled on there and also we need to keyframe this um enabling the dynamics back on as well because then if we let go that will hit that look and it'll smash 
But before that happens, if we render that, there won't be any cracks in it. Okay, I did wonder when I did this before, I was like, how do I get rid of those? So you literally, or what I do is I turn them off and then at the point of impact, as you can see here, you turn on the volanoid fracture and you turn on the, um, the rigid body for this dynamics to start working. And then as I think you'll, you'll see that it is quite, no, we don't need to see it like that, do we? Um, quite a nice effect. Zoom that out. Let's zoom that out and play that play that through one more time. I'm sorry this has gone on for more than four minutes, but I think I think you'll agree um, it's worth it because we get this really nice animation. So you, we've got a ball and chain um, working out how to get uh, links and, and a ball and a hoop to work correctly under gravity, and we've also just put a pane of glass in here as well just to show how how it impacts and how you can use a wrecking ball in a really creative way. A little bit like I did with my glass and my rag dog. So that's it, I'm gonna wrap it up now. Um, I hope you got something out of this. Show me your examples of things you can do with wrecking balls, that will be great. And I'll see you tomorrow in day five for another one of these fun in four presentations. My name is Mike German from Visual Animation. See you tomorrow, bye for now, take care.